This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Imagine staying up late to finish your essay that's due tomorrow, and you forget to save your work. Just like that, all that hard work, gone. Imagine getting a good long workout session and forgetting to drink your protein shake. Just like that, gains, gone. Imagine investing years of your life into your favorite show only to learn that the author can no longer write more episodes. Childhood, gone. So I've just described to you in three different metaphors what you're doing to yourself when you don't get a good night's sleep before and after studying or learning. So the next time you have an epic study session planned out, you have your Remnote flashcards ready to go, you have your favorite Cajun Koi playlist queued up, you still gotta ask yourself this one question. Am I gonna get enough sleep to make this study session worth it? Because if the answer is no, you could just consider not studying as hard. I know this sounds kind of crazy, but let's back up a bit and look at the science as to why this happens. Why do we sleep in the first place? Well, there's essentially three levels of utility that we get from our sleep. First, we sleep to survive. To this day, we haven't discovered an animal that doesn't need sleep. We all need sleep. For humans, seven to nine hours a day is the sweet spot. Lions sleep 15 hours a day. Koalas sleep 20 hours a day. Elephants sleep for only four hours a day. You think that the elephant is highly productive, or is it the koala? So the thing is, our longevity is tied to our sleeping habits. Literally, how long you live for is directly tied to how much you sleep. If you think about it, our brains are always on. They're always working. There's a simple truth. The shorter your sleep, the shorter your life. Short sleep predicts all-cause mortality. During the daytime, our brains are working hard to control our activities. But at night, our brains don't sleep. They're still working hard to clean up the mess that was made during the day. What's happening is that when the brain is awake and is at its most busy, it puts off clearing away the wastes until later. And then when it goes to sleep and has, doesn't have to be as busy, it shifts into a kind of cleaning mode to clear away the waste, the waste that's accumulated throughout the day. So it's actually a little bit like how you or I, we put off our household chores during the work week when we don't have time to get to it. And then we play catch up on all the cleaning that we have to do when the weekend rolls around. So one of the most important aspects of cleaning up involves getting rid of all the toxic and cancerous cells in our body. When our body recognizes that a cell might become cancer, it will immediately try to get rid of that cancer before it has a chance to grow and even spread. So literally, when we sleep, we're protecting ourselves from cancer. In fact, the link between a lack of sleep and cancer is now so strong that the World Health Organization has classified any form of nighttime shift work as a probable carcinogen. As many of you know, I am a night shift doctor, and yes, I'm living life in the fast lane towards dying early, which is not something to be proud of, but my future plans are to eventually switch to a more regular daytime job. I guess one day I'll get enough experience to evolve, but for now, while building this YouTube channel, this setup isn't too bad. Before we move on, I wanna talk about Squarespace. Squarespace is a website builder. And let me tell you, we love Squarespace. You see, people nowadays, we all have a cell phone number. We all have an email. And I think the next most important thing is to have a website, which is basically your home on the internet. Especially now, since a lot of job applications and even the interview process is all virtual, having your own website really helps you stand out. If someone wanted to learn more about us, for example, we'd simply refer them to mikeandmaddie.com. They can find all our videos, our blog, our newsletter, our music, you can even upload your resume if you wanted to. And my favorite part is that it's customizable, so you can design it however you want and let your personality shine through. Zero coding skills required. So head on over to squarespace.com slash Mike and Maddie for a free trial and then 10% off your first purchase. Secondly, we sleep to enhance our learning. Getting good sleep does three things for your learning. It helps you remember what you've learned, it helps you make connections between what you've learned and what you already know, and it helps you clear your mind and prepare you for more learning the next day. You need sleep after learning 
to essentially hit the save button on those new memories so that you don't forget. But recently we discovered that you also need sleep before learning. And now to actually prepare your brain, almost like a dry sponge, ready to initially soak up new information. And without sleep, the memory circuits of the brain essentially become waterlogged, as it were, and you can't absorb new memories. When we sleep, our brain is literally backing up files to the cloud. It's like a computer saving work to a hard drive. Check this video out here, where I go into even more detail at the neurologic level and show you what the different stages of sleep do for your learning and your memory. So Dr. Matthew Walker did an experiment where he took two groups of students. He sleep deprived one of them and let the other group sleep normally. Then he tested their learning and used MRI scans to see what kind of brain activity was going on and found that there was a 40% deficit in the ability of the brain to make new memories when you are sleep deprived. Just think about that for a second. What grade would you get on a test if it were a 40% difference? In fact, to put that in context, it would be the difference in a child acing an exam versus failing it miserably, 40%. And when you look at this structure in those people who'd had a full night of sleep, we saw lots of healthy learning-related activity. Yet in those people who were sleep-deprived, we actually couldn't find any significant signal whatsoever. Number three, we sleep to enhance our performance. Yet so sleep is probably the greatest legal performance enhancing drug that few athletes are abusing enough. You see it in some discrete athletes. So Roger Federer claims to sleep around about 12 hours. Usain Bolt, a famous sprinter, um, slept somewhere between nine and a half to 10 hours a night. And one of the world records that he broke, he'd only been awake for about 35 minutes beforehand after sleeping and then came out and broke a world record. The basketball player, LeBron James, sleeps uh, 12 hours as well. And we work with all of these athletes. And this is true for both sports athletes and brain athletes. Because don't forget, when you're hyper-focused on a study session or while you're taking an exam, your brain is burning energy. I talk a lot more about that in this video here, but I wanna emphasize that it's not just about the performance intensity, it's also about endurance. What we call this is this anabolic window or what we call money time sleep. And this is generally between the hours of 10 and two because it's more lined up with your natural melatonin secretion. So if you go to sleep during those times, you actually spend more time in the deepest, most anabolic stages of sleep and you tend to produce more human growth hormone. Becoming a good student requires multiple, multiple study sessions, day after day. If you're like Maddie and me, and you go to medical school, you're looking at four, five, six plus years of focused study. It doesn't matter if you're a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a gamer, you need to develop good sleeping habits to perform at a professional level. Uh, I've always had a hard time sleeping. You know, I couldn't figure out how to shut my brain off. So what made the light bulb come on is that I went out there and played a game and I played like crap. <laughs> and I was like, why am I playing like crap? Because I've been practicing these same moves over and over and over. But yet I couldn't execute them properly. I was feeling sluggish, I was feeling lethargic and I knew it wasn't because of my training um, because I had trained obsessively. Um, so then I started looking at other things. And that's when I came to the realization that, hey, Kobe, you're not 21 years old anymore, buddy. Like, maybe the fact that you're sleeping two or three hours a night, maybe that has something to do with the fact that you're playing like crap. And that's when I started really evaluating those things. So now that we know why we sleep, let's get back to the original questions at hand. Before you go ahead and plan out an epic study day and you pack your backpack and you head over to your favorite study spot, you need to ask yourself, did I get enough sleep the night before to prepare my brain to learn? And am I going to get enough sleep tonight to make sure that what I learned today will be saved? So now you're thinking, okay, Mike, you've told us why we sleep, but how do we get better sleep? And I've already talked about a step-by-step -step way to get better sleep and details about the sleep phases in an earlier video. And you can watch that right here.